Hi, my name is Brady Killeen. For my senior project, I made a math-based puzzle game, which is uh, mainly for elementary school children because oftentimes they don't want to focus on math. It's not fun. So I decided to make a game so it would be more fun, and although I don't promise that it's fun for them, uh, it'll at least be interactive. And uh, at, the later, at the later levels, the, uh, the levels get difficult enough that if you just like puzzle games like myself, then the game should be decently fun anyway. Um, I wrote it in using Unity, and then the scripts were written in C Sharp. Um, let's go ahead. Here's the Unity. Just uh, just open up the game. The main menu and everything scaled off of uh, the percentage of the screen, so it'll change based on resolution. And the first thing I wanted to do is include a tutorial, because even though it should be pretty straightforward, uh, I wanted people to be able to look through and do a tutorial in case they didn't want to learn it themselves. So, but it's short and it's all really clear so I'll go through it real quickly. You cover the you're the blue square, you're controlling that and the number well I'll get to the number in a second, but uh you can move the cube by clicking and dragging, so like like so. It makes the path green and then you go to it. Or you can just click in a straight line. So and it'll build the path for you and then you can do a combination of those. It'll go back. And then the C at the beginning of the level, which is usually where your cube starts, will reset the level so that one time use things can be done again. Then there's the goal at the end where you try and match the number, and if it's not the right number, then it won't go. And if you go over the yellow ones, it will apply the math to it. You can stop on them, no big deal. The purple ones are one time use, so you can, yeah, you know, it just happens one time. And then you can put it all together and just go toward the end. There's, there it is. And then you're done with the tutorial. So it's nice and easy. There's no, you're not forced to go through the long, boring tutorials of clicking through text like normal. So there you go, and then it starts out. So it's divided into three different types of levels. I'll go back to the main menu. Oh yeah, you can do that on any page, by the way. The main menus are always right here. And then the levels listed up at the top right. So beginners mostly, if they're trying to learn how the game works, or and then if they're like really young, so probably, I don't know, first grade, something like when you're barely learning math and you kind of know like 2 plus 1 equals 3, this kind of a thing. So, and then the levels get progressively more difficult, and then by the time you're done with the beginner levels, you're subtracting a few and then doing like like so, like three operations to get your final answer. And then you go into the intermediate, which it basically just adds another row on the top and then two on the sides to make the level bigger. And then these ones get a little bit more intense. You have I don't know, just a few more operations and stuff. And then eventually uh, I introduce the one-time use ones that actually have a use, so this one you have to hit five, and then if you mess up so you go over this, don't realize you have the three, and then go back over, then there's no way to do it, so you have to reset. So, yep, that kind of idea. So the intermediate is more for, I don't know, people who know math, and then maybe like a couple grades higher, because then you get up into multiplication and things, and that's, there was no multiplication in the beginning levels. Um, so yeah, you go through that, whatever, and you can reset and everything. And then, finally, the expert ones. Uh, this one is mostly designed for either the gifted uh, elementary schoolers or the people who just like puzzle games, like myself. So it's kind of proof that you can have fun with it even if, you, uh, if you're not learning math. So like, there's a bunch of levels, and then like this one you have to divide by 2 at some point, so you know, have to know that 22 times 21 times 2 is 42. So yeah, you get 42 over here, and then you finish up. But then the real trick is uh, by the end, so we've got some more operations divided by two, you have to do it, and, and it goes into a decimal, so it's a little bit more difficult. But then uh, if you finish up, like, the last extra level is a little bit more difficult, and I'll quickly go through it just to show what's after it. So there's a couple ways to win most levels, so um, really this guy's the limit. This is just kind of, there we go. But then it opens up bonus level one, which this one isn't listed on the main menu, so you have to beat the expert ones to get to it. And this is more, it doesn't conform to the usual level design where it's almost square. This one has like holes right here, so this isn't actually anything. But so, but yeah, and this one, it's just kind of to show that you can make it fun even for people who aren't trying to learn math. But yeah, and then when you're done, it takes you back to the main menu. So that's the game, basically. Uh, I'll quickly review what I had for my um, the hope tasks and stuff. Setting up the board and everything. I've done all of the core tasks, so like menus for difficulty, early levels, and things like that. Um, the hope tasks, yeah, I draw the path. So this is one of the main ones. I put it as a hope task, even though I, it's important to me that that was done, because the movement is kind of 
what everyone's doing, so it's important that you finish that up. I didn't do any uh, social media or audio, so... But, and then the tutorial, so the tutorial's a big part, even though uh, I generally don't like tutorials, but I realize that some people need them, so... And I wanted to make it as painless as possible, and interactive, so... I hope I did that right. <laughs> um... And finally, I didn't add a generating randomly level or generating random levels, but of course that's within the realm of possibility. Um, I'll quickly go. I'll show Unity real fast because Unity is really the powerhouse behind most of this. Uh, I got a lot of the stuff for free, like the matching, like putting the menu button so it uh, just links to the bottom left corner and stuff. That's free in Unity, and it comes with uh, for free like this Mono Develop, and so the Unity client is right there, and then the uh, Mono Develop for editing scripts and stuff. So, um, I'm not going to go over like the exact details, but uh, most of them, they're in the format of you have the start one, which happens when the object is initialized, and then you have the update one, which is run every single game tick. So, um, and then I just, like, I had to hide, uh, based on whether the player was on top of this square, I would have to hide the text, otherwise the text would be displayed through and stuff like that. So just, like, little tweaks where Unity, like, thinks it's kind of being clever, but at the same time, I, don't, I just didn't want that uh, functionality, so... But yeah, there's, I mean, there's a few things. You can also define anything that's public is accessible in the Unity um, client. You can look at the, so like this would be available and I could change that on an instance of the script set to an object. So that's nice. And then I can make public variable or public uh, functions that I can call on that. So, and like this one, yeah, I attach that to a button that goes back to the main menu. So, um... And I'm sitting at about uh, 125 hours, so that's about right where I thought I'd be, and that's pretty good. I mean, obviously it'd be faster uh, if I were to remake everything, which, because doing it for the first time just slows it all down. But um, I'll jump back into Unity real fast, because I wanted, or into the game, uh, I wanted to be sure that the movement worked perfectly, so I feel like it's it needed to be really smooth and you couldn't really mess up, so the doing the straight line thing I think is pretty novel like I haven't really seen people do that and then uh, also if you get super impatient like me sometimes and while it's executing the path you can just continue doing the next path and then it will just continue it will follow where you were going and then also if you go in some place that you go back onto your own path and then uh, it doesn't decolor it until after it goes on it the last time so that's nice too but uh, and that's basically all there is to see I mean uh, if you want a uh, copy of the source code, a copy of the game, anything like that, questions or anything, feel free to email me and uh